We don't really have mysteries in games anymore. The days of El is Real 2401 and Finding Mew under a truck are long gone. Urban legends are a thing of the past with data mining. People dig through a game's files and look for secrets the moment it releases. Take your mind back to a time where that wasn't commonplace. To when you were younger and a bit more naive. To when video games felt less like products, more like little playgrounds. I think you have to do that to appreciate this region in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's near impossible to analyze it without putting yourself in that headspace. Welcome to Video Game World Tours. Mount Chiliad, home to many an uneasy feeling for children of the 2000s. You're taken straight from the densely populated streets of Los Santos into the sparse and lonely woods of Whetstone. And I mean taken, the game rips you from the end of a mission downtown and drops you in a trailer park way on the other side of the map. You're out of your element. There's this little town, but look at all that. There's so many hills and trees surrounding this place. Who knows what lies in there? And again, really put yourself in the mind of a young kid. Your brain is a lot more open to weird things happening. And the game really sets the mood with the lack of buildings, the color scheme, the fog. Man, this is truly the perfect setting for a child's mind to go wild. You hear rumors from a friend that he saw a tall, dark figure way out in the distance one day. He's your friend, so obviously he's telling the truth. And now that you think about it, you kind of remember seeing something once as well. It was far away, so it was hard to make out exactly who it was. Then what would a person be doing on Mount Chiliad? Unless it wasn't a person. Your friend sends you this video. It's not the highest quality video around, but you can definitely make out a figure in the woods. What was that? He sends you this one too. Another creature in the woods. It wouldn't make any sense for a pedestrian to be out here. Then you find this. Oh my god, that's it! It doesn't get any clearer than that! So you invite your friend over on Saturday, and you both spend hours traversing all over Whetstone and Flint County looking for this mysterious creature. You haven't seen anything the whole time, but the allure of finally catching it keeps you going. It might be just over that hill, we have to keep going. Eventually, it's time for your friend to go home. You turn off the PlayStation 2, no closer to finding the beast than when you started. Maybe you launch the game tomorrow morning and get back to searching for it on your own. Maybe you keep at it for a week. You continue to watch YouTube videos, searching for a good tutorial on how to find it. Wait, is that a Thompson SMG? That's not in the base game. He must have modded the PC version to add that. But hold on. If he added that gun, who's to say he didn't add the big-footed beast? You start to have the sinking realization that none of this is actually real. Maybe you still hold out a little bit of hope and continue scouring the mountainsides looking for him, but eventually, one of these days spent searching will be your last. You will never genuinely look for mysterious creatures in San Andreas ever again. UFOs, CJ's mom's ghost, Leatherface, there were so many rumors spreading about this game back in the day. Part of it was because I think this was a lot of kids' first open world game. It captured their imagination in a way that a game like Ratchet & Clank couldn't. But also, I think Mount Chiliad itself played a large part in that. It just feels naturally spooky around here, like something could be lurking just out of view waiting to pounce on you. And now, with the benefit of hindsight, we can say that is definitely not the case. No Bigfoot model has been found in the game's files. There's no flying UFO code. Nothing about any ghosts. We know that San Andreas has none of that. But back then, not a lot of people did know that. And Mount Chiliad feels like a hotspot for mysteries. There just has to be something hiding around here. At some point in your life, though, you just accepted that there wasn't anything like that. And this is just a normal, non-Bigfoot harboring world. So let's finally leave that behind and explore what actually is in the game. Angel Pine is your home after being taken from Los Santos. This feels like a completely different world. Here's Angel Pine, 
and here is CJ's mom's house. It's not that far of a drive in-game, but you really feel isolated out here. I guess you could still drive back to Grove Street, but the story really had its hooks in me. I was on the run, it would not have been a good idea for CJ to go back to Grove Street, so I shouldn't either. And it'll be a long time before you do go back in the story. CJ's kind of a nomad at this point, hopping between towns. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have some spots to look at before CJ's next home. On the eastern edge of this region, there's a couple of buildings stretching down the highway. The way there's just nothing for a good bit of the roadway here, and then a building pops up out of nowhere, it reminds me of rest spots on a long road trip. It's nice to get out and stretch your legs before hitting the road again. I appreciate the isolation of spots like this. There's a building towards the south I want to look at. Let's drive over there real quick. Man, the open road. I think this game really benefits from having downtime between major locations. You get to listen to the radio and take in your surroundings. Pure zen. Ah, here we are. Just a plain little convenience store. I think it's fun that you can go inside some of these. Much like the bar in the first video, there isn't a whole lot to do. Just some vending machines and arcade cabinets. You can't even rob the store. But it adds to the world that you can just waltz in. No reason to, but you can. I might be mistaken, but didn't later games in the series cut down on interiors like this? I hope GTA 6 lets you go inside more random stores and restaurants. Next spot is up on Mount Chiliad. Don't worry, no aliens or big-footed cryptids up here. Just a shack in the middle of nowhere. Though this is the building where that one guy had a Bigfoot sighting. Maybe we'll finally catch a glimpse of him. Huh. Guess not. Anyway, a mission brings you up here early on after coming to the region. You're asked to drive to this cabin and kill an informant that's being protected by the FBI. They're hiding way up in the mountains here, far, far away from civilization. As soon as I got here and walked inside, I thought it was funny that there's literally no furniture. No chairs, no rugs, no doors, nothing. Not even a table to play cards on. I wonder what this guy was up to all day. I guess he was just standing around waiting for CJ to come and whack him. And now that the mission has long been completed, it's even more empty. Just an empty cabin in the middle of the woods. Cute. Alright, let's head further north. Ah, more buildings. We're finally out of the boonies. The first building you come across from the south is the Country Club. It's a pretty impressive building. I wish I could go inside. There is one weird thing about this place, though. A chainsaw pickup in the tennis courts. That feels so out of place. Is it a reference to something? I'm imagining it'd be something like finding a chainsaw in a bathroom, referencing Scarface. Or a camera pickup near a wheelchair and window, referencing Rear Window. Is there some movie out there that involves a chainsaw and a tennis court? Or am I overthinking this? No, that can't be it. I don't overthink things. Further north is a residential area. If I'm being honest, I don't think I ever explored this part of town. I can't remember a mission that brought me here. Or if one did, it definitely didn't leave a mark on me. So many nondescript houses. Though there are a few buildings that stick out. Like this thing. I don't even know what I'd compare it to. It has to be based on a real-life building. It's too specific. This building kind of stands out. The sign and bright lighting really draw the eye to it compared to all the other bland buildings nearby. Or this... theater. Okay, that joke's not even clever. Come on. Ugh, okay, it's a little funny. Alright, we'll finally make our way to downtown San Fierro. Yeah, this has a distinct feel compared to Los Santos. Very San Francisco-esque. The colors are generally more cool here, so that definitely changes the vibe. Zero RC is a business you can acquire during the story. Kind of a silly little shop. Got a lot of tiny little textures to explore. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Hmm. Uh. Nah, nothing of note. Definitely nothing that'll be the focus of a future video game world tour. Here's a construction site. Just like in GTA 3, I love a good construction site in a game. 
Nothing super interesting around here, I just think the vibes are cool. This building is floating off the ground a bit, that's fun. Oh, and you can pay your respects to the guy you mercilessly buried alive. I thought that was kind of uncalled for, but hey, CJ, you do you. In the first tour where I covered Los Santos, I mentioned a spot that felt straight out of a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. And here it is. This is quite literally out of Tony Hawk. Both this and the windy street from Streets in THPS 1 are based on Lombard Street, a real-ass place in San Francisco. It's such a distinct looking street, Rockstar would have been fools not to include it. Kinda annoying to drive through though. Oh hey, you can buy a house on this street. You know, I don't think I've bought a single house in this game. This is definitely one of the more expensive ones, costing $100,000. Most I've seen cost like 20 k or so. I genuinely don't know what to expect going in. I hope it's extravagant. Okay, kind of a cozy main room. Ugh, this place has the same poster that we saw in the military guy's house in Los Santos. I'll do my very best to avoid all of them for YouTube's sake. If it's in these two, I bet it's in a lot of houses. It's probably the Mona Lisa in this world. Some pizza? Did this come with the house when I bought it? This is my first time walking in, I assume it did. I'd have a bite if the game let me. Ooh, a hallway with a bunch of doors. That's some nasty flooring. Definitely doesn't feel appropriate for prime real estate in a city like this. Nicely sized bedroom though. Okay, I guess all the rooms have this awful wood plank flooring. I feel like if it was carpeted instead, it looks super nice. Wait a minute, you can see reflections in the wood. This type of wood seems like it shouldn't be reflective. It doesn't look polished at all. Then again, what do I know about wood? What a sad little TV situation. Why does no house in this game have a nice TV setup? It's always poorly placed, or in this case, super low to the ground and on a dinky little table. Alright, here we go. This feels appropriate. This is where all that $100,000 went. Though, uh, no shower? If this was a $100,000 house, I'd hate to see the $10,000 ones. Hmm, there's another house nearby. I kinda wanna see what it looks like too, just to get a feel for the different houses in the game. $20,000, oof, prepare yourselves. Okay, that's about what I expected. Back to outside exploring. Let's drive to the next spot. Man, you really scrape your bumper a lot on these steep angled streets. That's probably accurate to real life. Here's our next point of interest, a big pointy building. Sorry, THE big pointy building. Gotta put some respect on the name there. When I'm driving around scouting for spots in this game, I like to keep an eye out for the little arrows that indicate you can go in a building. That's how I found the convenience store earlier, I just happened to notice the arrow in front of the door. As I was driving around San Fierro though, I noticed something peculiar about this building. It didn't have an arrow in front, but the door was open. I thought that was kind of bizarre. So of course, being the explorer that I am, I walked into the spooky black void. The game fades back in, with you on top of THE big pointy building. What a view. You're able to enter here before you start flying airplanes, so this gives you a little taste of the clouds. It's so cool looking down at what feels like a maze at ground level. Up here, the paths are so clear. Well, if it isn't foggy, that is. This almost feels like a spot in a Spider-Man game. From here you could jump to any building you like. CJ is afraid of heights, so I won't do that to him. There's an interesting area behind some buildings on the eastern side of the city. Through here is an open air space, completely surrounded by homes. It's like a back alley, but built up along a hill. I feel like I've been seeing the iconic San Francisco sloped houses all my life, but I don't think I've ever seen a back alley to houses like that. Across the street, there's a less complex version of this. Just a path going up with some grass on the sides. Kinda quaint. Each individual house doesn't get a lot of space, but every square inch counts in a city like this, I bet. Okay, one more spot before my favorite in this region of the map. I talked about this type of area in my Grand Theft Auto 3 tour, so I guess I have to do it here too. Welcome to Easter Bay Airport. 
You know, this doesn't feel as empty as the one I looked at in GTA 3. This one has more of a circular layout, so there's not as many long, uninterrupted stretches of just nothing. This airport is pretty cool, but honestly, I think I preferred Francis International from Liberty City. I loved how you could drive to the furthest possible end of the runway and just be so far out. Since this is a circle, you're never really that far from the center. Alright, final spot of the video. And this isn't super obscure or anything. In fact, the story brings you here. But as you know, I like returning to mission locations after the fact. Which brings us to this cargo boat. You can just waltz right in like you did during the mission. Nothing's blocked off and there are no enemies to challenge you. You can go all the way to the dead end and walk all the way back. I don't know why, I just love when games keep spots like this around. I wish San Andreas kept more building interiors open after mission completion. There's another boat further west. This one you actually have to fly onto. There's no ramp that lets you get on from the bay. You can go right back up to the bridge where you had an epic sword fight with the captain. No sword fighting now though. And you can go below deck too. Remember, you came down here to help a bunch of people that were in a shipping container. It's gone now though. Guess this boat is completely empty, save for CJ. Poor lonely boat. That's all I got. Keep an eye out for next week's video where we finish the San Andreas Tour Trilogy. Thanks for watching. Oh my god.